Well, it's been one year. I can hardly believe it. Just about one year since I've rolled out ingenious access points at my house because, well, I've gotten fed up with literally everything else. <laughs> Admittedly, my home use is probably like your business use. I've got three access points and three PoE switches, a whole bunch of device, a whole bunch of PoE telephones and connectivity. I'm never really unplugged. And all of it, I rolled everything out as ingenious. And it's because I've been frustrated with other solutions in the market. And it's, there's a lot of gee whiz features. I mean, it's really cool if you have augmented reality, but it's not really cool if you have to install a new firmware every other week and devices drop mysteriously. I mean. I've got a bunch of wired devices. I prefer a wired connection, but you know, Wi-Fi 6E. If you're slow coming with good solid Wi-Fi 6E connections, or I can't use you know a wireless Chromecast or wireless Roku or wireless whatever, or you know whatever the thing du jour is to stream 4K 60 Hertz, or AirPlay doesn't work correctly because something else. It's not really AirPlay. Okay, I'm using the off-label AirPlay. I get frustrated really quickly. So I'm happy to report overall. My solution has been working really well for a year. So cool. Now, admittedly, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles as some of the other solutions. And at cost parity, maybe a little less, but generally cost parity. But then I noticed Ingenious has some new stuff. And also, Ryan's been complaining a lot about his home setup. So we at Level 1, we're working on an 099 series to upgrade your home networking and begin to think about things. Now, you might be wondering, why do you need so many wireless access points at home? It's like the strategy for dealing with wireless devices is changing. And we're going to talk more about that in the 099 videos. But basically, it's you've got so many wireless devices, more or less powerful wireless access points is better than fewer really powerful wireless access points because you can go to, you know, three by three radios, four by four radios, five by five. What that means is physically the number of transmit or receive antennas inside the physical device. It's better if you have devices that can speak to each other over a wired network, but offer multiple radios. So that's what I've done because I want high speed, high throughput. And the way to get that is to have a bunch of access points that are physically close to the client. You'll have more consistent coverage across your whole house, whether you're in front, in front of your hot water heater, you're in the attic. You know, if you have to join that Zoom meeting from the bathroom, you totally can do it because you've got five bars because there's a wireless access point everywhere. You're never more than eight feet from a wireless access point. This is kind of the future. If you live in an apartment, okay, yeah, single access points, probably still good, maybe two. But uh, the sheer number of devices is also easier to manage. So if you have the, the work surface and then your home surface and then your kids have a laptop and then there's a streaming device and then there's a computer that you just don't want to run a wire to and then there's some other stuff and then your toaster and your washing machine really want to get on the Wi-Fi, you know, pretty soon you've got 20, 30 devices. If you have 20 or 30 active devices on a, on a, you know, a consumer grade wireless access point, you're not in for a good time. But if you balance that across two, three, four access points, generally things will be much, much faster and things will actually work better because they're going to be using different parts of the spectrum. Some may be 2.4 gigahertz, some may be like five or six gigahertz. Most of my IoT devices are on a completely different SSID with a completely different radio channel than everything else. And they're talking to each other and they can't get on the network on that wireless access point. I mean, they can get on the network, but they can't get on the internet. And that is where they need to be. You can think about those things and architect those things when you've got something that's above, you know, the Walmart grade wireless router. You definitely don't want one of those, but we'll talk about that in another video. So be sure to look for those. But specifically for the ingenious technology, you can roll it out if you're 099, but you know, like I say, it's really probably small business. It's probably more small business than, than home user. But Ryan, because he was having trouble at home, well, we decided to roll out Ingenius there as well. So we upgraded. He's got a better access point than I do. It's the ECW220S. The S stands for security. And when I dove into it, I was uh, a little skeptical because of the marketing claims. If you look at it, it says, okay, we've got AirGuard. It's like, okay, well, what is AirGuard? This sounds like a software thing. It's like, oh, we'll detect rogue access points and an evil twin. And okay, yeah, I mean, that's not really a big deal. But then I sort of peeled back the covers. This thing has dedicated radios in it at low speed, not really made for connecting to the actual clients, but that will monitor all of the spectrum. Uh, you see, one of the things that happens with uh, wireless networks 
is that you know an, a bad actor will set up a wireless access point with the same name and then it'll try to convince the clients that they've de-authenticated from the access point so it'll just you know spam anything that's connected with the de-auth packet i'm oversimplifying here a little bit but if it does that enough it will capture packets enough packets that it can reasonably crack the encryption of that wireless network so having multiple SSIDs is nice and having a guest wireless network is nice and you can even go really crazy and set up individual user auth. That's what they do in the enterprise. Everybody has their own username and password and that makes your encryption unique as well rather than a pre-shared key or a, you know, just a single password for the wireless. But we haven't set that up. I'm not even crazy enough to set that up at home. I just have multiple set separate networks, one for the IoT, one for this, one for that. Anyway, we got that set up at Ryan's house and it's really awesome. Now he lives out in the middle of nowhere, so if he's having evil twin attacks, it's probably time to get the gun. Just say it, because there's probably somebody really nearby his house, which would be unsettling. In addition, we also rolled out the ECS2512. This is an eight port, two and a half gig switch with four 10 gig ports. Now I think, I think this is the same one that I reviewed previously. It was just whatever we could find on Amazon. But the uh, setup there, is pretty awesome. That is the non-POE version though. So for Ryan's relatively modest Wi-Fi 6E setup at home, we just use power injectors. Not a big deal. You don't have to have every port be POE. Meanwhile, at my house, because I'm a crazy person, I get the POE Raspberry Pi and the POE phones and the POE cameras and the POE wireless access points. Really the only thing that needs POE two and a half gig and beyond are those really high performance access points. Multiple radios, intrusion protection, the whole nine yards. As we set up and tested and went through, you know, actually auditing the functionality of the access point, we found that in addition to the whole evil twin thing, it will actually give you an alert. That's pretty cool because we tested that. But it's also capable of telling you that the spectrum is really, really polluted. So 2.4 gigahertz, for example, is basically unusable in some places because we might have some other equipment that's using all the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and you'd never know that you just have weird flaky behavior from older clients that can only do 2.4 gigahertz now modern wi-fi 5 gigahertz and even 6 gigahertz for like the very newest newest revision of uh, wireless access i haven't tested the 6 gigahertz aspect of that some people are using it for a backhaul for a wireless mesh network kind of thing but that's the other really cool thing about this is that, hey, you drop in a, an air guard access point, and even if all of your access points aren't air guard, as long as that air guard is within earshot, uh, see what I did there, of uh, somebody that's trying to be a bad actor, it's still going to be logged. So you don't necessarily need every access point to be air guard. Now, there's two downsides or two things, you know, two, uh, uh, you know, caveat emptor things that you should be aware of. One is that this access point. Uh, uses security monitoring in the cloud. So it kind of gets definitions and it kind of gets rules from the ingenious cloud. It comes with 12 months for free. So when you first set it up, you set it up through an app and everything is enrolled and blah, blah, blah. I have mixed feelings about this. If I'm rolling this out at home, I don't know that I like this at home because it will require a subscription. I think it would be better if they did like a two or a three year edition, especially if like Maybe your first air guard access point was completely free forever. And then if you roll out more than one on the same account or something, then, then maybe that's less free because that is kind of an enterprise feature. Actually, only the most expensive solutions that I've seen uh, have something that is this well implemented. I mean, even the cheap stuff will tell you that there's a rogue access point, but to have dedicated radios and to have as high a fidelity reporting as this had was very, very surprising. So it's an interesting set of features that they've rolled in here at this price point, because when you take into consideration what else there is in the market, that's actually a shockingly good deal. The second thing is that, uh, yeah, you have to have an app and the cloud thing, and well, there's, there's probably already screeching in the comments that says, I don't want any kind of cloud functionality. Well, good news on the switches. With the switches, you can configure it with a password and log into it locally and do pretty much everything. It's, it's still a configuration, there's still some hoops that you gotta jump through, but Ingenious does actually make locally manageable versions of their products. So if it's not for home and it's for a business installation, like if I were setting this up for somebody, I would probably actually like this and it probably doesn't really bother me that there's a subscription, which it sounds kind of heretical 
but for what it does, you actually get a pretty good value for what it brings. Now the pricing equation and some of the complexity stuff might change in the future and I might change my mind. But more and more, you know, when you want that Cisco Meraki feature set, they are not bashful about charging you. And that's really, really unfortunate. But at the same time, we need to elevate the state of the art in competing companies. So we don't have something quite as egregious as uh, Meraki. Because I think Meraki stuff is, is kind of egregious for what it is. So it's kind of a darned if you do, darned if you don't. For me at home, it's been over a year. I'm not paying any subscription fees. I'm not really using any super advanced features that would warrant me paying for something else. It would be nice if Ingenious considered offering like a prosumer tier because I might consider paying something like $10 a year and me paying $10 a year is better than me paying $0 a year. Whereas like if you run a university and someone on campus is trying to steal your students info with you know an evil twin attack or some other kind of wireless thing that they need to be diligent for, this is a really good low cost solution for deployments like that compared with the alternatives in the market. There's not really a lot of competition, so this actually is a good product for that feature set for those people. If you are not wanting any kind of a sub subscription, you want to buy the hardware and just you know have it. Ingenious does actually have some options for you, but that's maybe something that I could look at in a different video. And I don't want to overemphasize the whole subscription thing. So, you know, with Meraki, it completely stops working in a year. It's like, oh, you haven't paid? Blech. Which uh, seems a little bit like being held hostage. This doesn't do that. It'll at least still keep working. You just might not get the advanced security features and some of the other stuff. So, eh, I don't know. It'd be nice if there was a model where you could pay for it up front, but I have a feeling that ship has sailed. In terms of the other features, the hardware features, and how good the radios are, and how good the clients connect, and even like, so the wireless network cards in these surfaces, it's kind of an open secret. Like Microsoft really, 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 really tried to optimize for power usage. Everything in here wants to use a crazy amount of power. As a result, the wireless cards in these surfaces are terrible uh, compared to what could be in there. It works great with the Ingenious wireless access point, which is not something that I can say they work consistently with other access points that I've tried. They'll tend to want to roam from access point to access point, or they'll say they're connected, but they're not actually connected, or weirdly like the MAC address gets scrambled. I've had none of that weird stuff with this solution, and if you've experienced that weird stuff, you know exactly what I'm talking about. None of that has happened through firmware updates and everything else for the last year for this solution, and so far, knock on wood, Ryan is pretty happy with his ingenious solution as well. Now at home, about half to three quarters of the equipment, I bought myself. The other ones, uh, the other equipment ingenious sent. So they sent a couple of things that I'm using at home, but the vast majority of the stuff that I'm using at home, I bought and I've been really, really happy with it. So good job ingenious. It's actually, I think, I think ingenious is working with a Taiwanese company that primarily deals with the Asian market, but that's maybe a conversation for a different day because if we go into a conversation about that, I like the hardware architecture that that company is doing. So this is not like an ingenious product. They're off on their own. The hardware partner in this is uh, very much been there, done that, which I also like. And my suspicions a year ago have only been validated as I've actually used the products. So yeah, I don't know. It's been kind of a level one update. And uh, maybe we'll hear from Ryan on the, on the news of the stream as to uh, how his wireless is doing and how all that's going. But uh, yeah, pretty exciting, pretty exciting stuff. It's nice to see the, uh, you know, sort of the minimum <laughs> be elevated to the point where it's like, well, someone's impersonating your SSID. What's going on with that? It's pretty cool. And what this is level one. This has been a quick look at the AirGuard features with Ingenious and specifically the ECW220S. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the level one forums. If you have any questions or, or, or you take the, the ingenious challenge, let me know. All right. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.